Next, I want to talk about cutting larger pieces on the table saw. I'm going to cut that sheet of plywood that's right behind me. It's a full 4x8 sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood. And that's something that I almost never do. Instead, what I do is I take it outdoors. I set it up on saw horses. I use what's known as a saw board and my circular saw. And I make an initial cut to cut it down to something more manageable, either a cross cut or a lengthwise cut, a rip cut. And then I bring it in. I do the rest of the cutting on the table saw because the pieces are smaller and easier to handle. Now, there are two reasons why I don't do big sheets. One is that my shop is not very big, so it's always kind of a pain to try to position things. And I'll show that coming up. The other thing is you don't get a really good, accurate cut. Uh, when you're trying to manhandle the piece through. If it gets snagged on something, I know one instance there was a staple sticking out the edge of one sheet. You might have seen that I ran into a problem when cutting this one. There was one of those plastic staples sticking out the side of the, the sheet that was broken off, but sticking out about a sixteenth of an inch. It just pushed it out away from the fence. I didn't notice it. I didn't check for it though. It got hooked on the end of my fence. It pushed it off to one side and it messed up the cut. So you're not going to get the most accurate cut doing it that way. Plus, it's kind of difficult as you'll see coming up. First thing I do is I take my tape and I measure back and see if I actually have enough space for the cut. And it looks like I do. The stuff that I've got piled up down there doesn't come far enough ahead. And then forward the outfeed table for my table saw is my workbench and that's completely clear so I know I'm good there and that's very important you want to have the area clear even before you turn on the saw you don't want to stop part way through the cut and try to move a bunch of junk out of the way As you can see, it's handy to have something in the back to set the sheet up on. I could pretend that I had it set up that way, but that's not the case. Those two things just happen to be there. Now the sheet is sitting here. The front of it is sitting on the table saw and it's also clear of the blade. So I can reach underneath and I can turn the saw on and I can start guiding it through the cut. Also, I position the sheet so that it's tight up against the fence. And I have the distance of the fence set so that I'm making a cut right down the middle. I stopped the cut halfway through to reposition the camera for another view, but I thought I would talk a little bit about how I'm feeding the sock in. I'm not standing behind the sheet, which I obviously can't do because all that junk is there. Instead, I'm on the side here. But the way I'm holding it is that I'm lifting up with my right hand on the back and I'm actually pushing down with my left on the front. I'm also guiding it up against the fence as well. Now you can see I had a little bit of difficulty at the beginning of the cut. I think there's something on the bottom of the sheet that got snagged in something. So I had to kind of wiggle it around. There are different ways to deal with that. There's the way that I did. I just tried to push it through like it broke free after a while and I was able to continue. I know that the cut that I'm making here is not going to be perfect anyway. So if it messes up a little bit, that's OK. The other way is to try to back it out. But if you do that when the saw is running, that could cause a kickback problem. And that's especially a problem if you're dealing with a smaller piece. OK, the third way is to set it down again so that it backs off the, the blade that way, lifts up out of the blade. That's probably the safest if you find you can't push it forwards. So continuing on with the cut, you should pay attention to what I'm doing here. I'm actually looking at the opposite edge of the plywood where it meets the fence rather than looking at the blade itself. I'm far enough away from the blade that I don't have to worry about it, but I don't want the sheet drifting off the fence and that can easily happen if you're not watching it. Also notice that I've changed position now that I can get behind the sheet, I'm there. 
obviously it's a better way to go. As long as the sheet is fully supported as it goes through the saw and comes out the other side.